All right, YouTube, we're back here. We missed the first game because I had my audio off because I was eating before I started playing. I don't think people want to listen to me chew, so, yeah. Um, boarding with this deck. I think that I want these. I'm um, not really interested in the Faithless Looting. <laughs> I haven't played it in a little while. I'd like to play it again. Uh, Gurmag Angler is not great because of the Joker Bog. Snapcaster is not great. Um, I could actually board out more Snapcasters, have a couple more bolts to be able to deal with uh, whatever that dum dum is on the draw. That little moron. But these fatal pushes aren't great either, so like Snapcaster is probably better than them. At least push is decent, but well, push isn't that great. It just hits. The tribe scout on the draw. But I do want to be able to kill the tribe scout. Rejection's not that great. Probably actually faithless looting. Because, like, it, we're not really that worried about going down a card in this matchup. If we don't go, go down a card, we go down a card. And it's not that big of a deal. Let's try this out. And this hand's decent. Lo looting can clean up some of this crap. Go thoughts ease on one. No turn one play from them. I'm going to leave that in case I hit a Serum Visions next turn. Though my mana might be so tight that I don't even care. Because like, what am I doing next turn? I'm playing Death Shadow. If I hit Death Shadow plus... If I hit a card I want to keep, I'm going to cast this anyway. So I'm actually just going to cycle this. I'm, gu I'm guaranteeing using my mana next turn, even if I hit a Serum Visions. All right. Um, pretty straightforward is Zuza. So that card is going to mess me up a little bit. The Pact can let them go get another Azusa, but that's pretty slow. And we might find a way to deal with the Pact. Alright, so... I think I'm just going to fetch. And then just play this. If they go Pact for an Azusa, I'm just going to dismember it. If not, I'll probably just dismember my Death Shadow and make it larger. When am I playing Legacy Shadow? I don't know. I don't really have a Legacy Tournament to play it in a, in a little while. Actually, I don't even know what it is there, Micah. I'm, I'm just playing Modern now because Standard's, like, not really in it. Yeah, sure, you get that. I shouldn't always yield to that, but... All right, if they want to counter... What do they got? I'm kind of down for just dismembering this. One, two, three. I know. What am I doing here? Dismember this. Next turn makes this seven, nine. If I, and then this is 11. Yeah. We could open ourselves up here, but like if they have a dismember, they're just going to do it anyways. But like this works here. Shock to nine. And then shock to 11, and that's 20. I am too. I'm going to do a standard, I'm just going to do a deck building stream tomorrow, because like, I believe the cards are available tomorrow. That's a pretty good draw. So let's, so now I have to shock myself so that we don't get spell pierced. And I have to take this Summoner's Pact so I don't get hit with Ballista. Okay, we'll just pay for it. Yes. 
Ooh, double summoner's pack just like kills me. I think. Because the double packed means they go get Ballista and they just murk me. No. Pack can't. Pack only gets green lands, green creatures. Oh, well, that's nice. Right? This only gets green creatures. Well, that's sweet. I might as well just take a Summoner's Pact or take Primeval Titan and make them pay for whatever they go get. Because, like, it doesn't really matter either way. Because they just go packed for, like, a Chump Blocker. Pay for their Pact. Chump Block, and they can't do anything the next turn. Though, if they go get Obstinate Bayloth, that could complicate things. To the Zuza. Yep. Radiant Fountain. Forest. So, their last card is Summer's Pact. Or we can just hit it like it's our job here. <clears throat> but it won't matter. So let's see. We had, if we would have Faithless Looting, let's see what we would have hit. One. That'd been, let's say that's not there. So that would have been our first card. Then Gurmag Angler. Then we could have Thought Scoured. So we mill these two and draw this one. All right. Either way, we were probably winning that game there. I need to go turn some lights on. It's already dark here. <sighs> okay. Bill is huge. He still has his harness on. I forgot to take your harness off. Here, buddy. You grab your harness. Bill, you want to say hi to Twitch chat? All right. All right, Philly boy, sit. Sit. Say hi to Twitch chat, buddy. Say hi to Twitch chat, you big man. We back here. Yeah, we're back. Uh, this hand's great. It was great if we, I mean, we get to see a million cards, but we have to hit a threat. If not, if like, it's kind of got everything we want. Like we can hit a Delve card. It's not great against Forest. Wild Nakato. Dude, Phil is big. For sure. All right. I'd like to find a Death Shadow pretty quickly. I'm not going to cycle this Street Wraith because I'm pretty much 100%. I'm 100% to Thoughtseize anyways. Unless I hit a Fatal Push. They have a path on top of their deck, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so this takes this. This takes... Both these are kind of annoying. So this is going to take this. Thoughtseize will take this. Hopefully by the time we need to deal with that path, we have a threat and stubborn denial, but we don't really want to get run over on cards. All right, well, at least we have a way to deal with the Nakadal. All I think we're still, we're going to hold this. Because I think we're going to Serum Visions next turn. So we're going to hold the Street Wraith. We're going to fetch a basic island in Serum Visions next turn. Hand is, that's fake news, Teddy. Oh, Moto's tweaking out. 
Come on, Moto, you can do it. Oh, we're good now. Island. Show me. Uh, Snapcaster isn't really that great. And I think, is it better than a random draw? Like snap bolt is probably okay. So let's put this on top. I can thought seize their path and then thought scour them. Because we know their cards, so they play a windswept teeth. I'm gonna have to deal with this path anyway. It's gonna put me a three, which means I can get bolted. So probably not going to thought seize. Then I probably shouldn't have even have that snapcaster mage. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna thought scour myself. We need the big boys. We don't need anything fancy like a Snapcaster Mage. Oh, Kessig Wolfron. All right. So maybe now we need a Snapcaster Mage because every single threat is lethal. I really don't want to draw this Snapcaster. Uh, we could hit, still hit like a Death Shadow. And then having the Snapcaster after that is pretty solid. All right, Ds. So we know their cards. So let's just play this. Because Lightning Bolt doesn't do anything if I stub this. Though I'm going to feel like an asshole if they hit another path to exile. Yeah, it was a good draw. Though, it, like, so I could Thought Seize this. Go to two. Play Shadow, have Stubborn Denial. And Stubborn Denial covers a path to exile. Or Lightning Bolt. The only thing that path to exile that not thought seizing now doesn't do is doesn't cover us from a second path. So I think I'm gonna thought seize. We're just gonna two turn them. Last card's planes. Oh, so I just attack. If I just attack, probably takes it. No matter what, I'm probably losing to like a lightning bolt off the top because I have to kill this. Unless my opponent's dumb. Because they can only wolf on this for one. Play their land, lightning bolt. Yeah. No, actually, they need to rip red source to do that. And, and to turn this on. Oh, yeah, so we totally can just attack... If my opponent goes to Wolf Run, then we just kill the Noble Hierarch. If they don't, or if they don't Wolf Run, they can't kill us, and then we just sit behind Snap Stub. Because the last card's playing, so they have to top deck Red Source and Lightning Bolt to kill me. Then as soon as they tap their Red Source to go for it, We pass. So we can get a little wrecked by Path to Exile on this Shadow. 
But if that happens, at least we've got a 2-1 in play. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So against a green creature deck, I want this, this, this. I don't really know if I want these. I don't know how big they go. Like if they go Knight of the Reliquary, like I don't. I guess I don't really know how the deck looks anymore, because like I, I doubt they're a small. They're they're not a low to the ground version of the deck. They're probably much larger. I have to cut three cards before I even think about bringing any of these in. So Stubbs probably kind of medium. I doubt if they have if they have Blood Braid out, they probably don't have Collected Company. Faithless Looting is not good once you hone your deck. Hone your deck. I can cut a Street Wraith. So now I can see arguments for any one of these cards here. If we want to board Jason, we have to set up for a really long game, which probably means cutting our Street Wraiths. Which I don't know if that's exactly what we want to do. Unless we just want to be like really reactive on the draw. If we want to be like super reactive on the draw, I could see going something like like this and then bringing in these guys. But I'm not sure if that's what I should be doing here. I think that the uh, four color traverse decks, like the four color shadow decks, are essentially. Uh, worst versions of this deck since Field of Ruin was printed. Like, Field of Ruin just, like, completely hoses those decks, I think. And I don't think you can stay along with the control decks or hang with the humans decks without Snapcaster Mage for removal. All right, we're going to try this. I don't, I, like, I'm going to go on record saying that this might not be right, but we're just going to try to be, like, removal... I probably should cut a Gurmag Angler because they have, they're probably pretty heavy on scavenging news. This is more of like I have Jace in my deck and I want to play it than having this be right. Yeah, dude, Mantis Rider is very very good card. Though, I think the metagame is shifting away from humans because I, th I think that Bant Spirits is really where you want to be. I think that deck does like essentially most of the things that humans does. It does not go as big. But it is much, much more disruptive. I need to fix my mic. I fix my camera here. I think that deck, and I think that deck is very good against blue white control, while humans is like evenish probably. So I have two thought scours, which is going to enable a Gurmag Angler and a bunch of cantrips. I'm going to keep this hand, and like they're likely going to path me to move me towards this chase. Yeah, I'm not sure that it goes bigger and I'm not sure it go, if it goes wider. It does go bigger, for sure. Like, you just get larger creatures. You do lose a lot of... Di we don't need a second one of those. You do lose some disruptive aspects of the deck, though. Like, the the, the band, the band dis disruption is really good. Okay, so there's that annoying scavenging use. I think we're going to take the Scavenging Ooze is just going to body me so hard. I think I'm going to take this Scavenging Ooze, get my Gurmag Angler path, and then just try to like outcard this Domri with my Jace. I think that's our game plan. I think, I think you need Vile. Like, I think Vile is really important. Because either vial just lets you cheat on mana, and the format's very fast. All right, so we unfortunately drew a bunch of lands, but we're hopefully going to be able to brainstorm a couple of those away. So let's do this first before we, I should have fetched because it would suck. To, we have so many lands in our hand; it would suck to mill something over. Okay, so what does that do? Yeah, we milled over some good cards, but all right. So I think that means.
Swamp. I kind of want to fetch a basic. They're a path to exile deck, though. That's probably crazy. So let's go. Hey! None of that, Phil. No barking. Everything's okay, bud. Phil heard something. He went nuts. Though I could just, like, let this thing get pathed and play my Jace next turn. Yeah, sorry about that. This is interesting. No, I, I really don't want to play with this. Like, if I can eliminate my opponent on this card advantage access, then Chase should should dominate this. Oh, so they hit a Blood Braid Elf. Oh, that kind of like messes everything up. Because the Blood Braid Elf, I can't cast the Elf. I think I'm going to take their next turn play, and we're going to look to see if we can find an answer to that Elf. That Blood Braid Elf made it so like my play was just like not good. Okay. So I think we just go threat, threat this turn. We're going to go to nine so that they can't bolt my shadow. And then we're going to have something on the board when we go to play Jace next turn. Two, three, four, five. We can get rid of this shadow probably. Yeah, that was a good hand. So let's get an island. If our opponent misses here, we've likely we're likely won this game, I think. They, like they need to cast Blood Red Elf in order to keep up, I think. All right, that Tarmogoyf is big. That Goyf's annoying. I can actually shock myself. I can go Jace tick up. Shock myself, block and bolt. I think that's the plan. We're gonna go up on them to make it so they don't hit a land. I don't really want to go down because they're just gonna bolt the Jace. Yes. What made their walker so big? The thing so big, it's the Dom ready, okay. Where's your bolt going, bud? Bolting me, okay. There's a Wooded Foothills. That's not good. We totally could just die. Guess who almost strained soup into a strainer. Who would do such a thing like that, Archmage? Tireless Tracker. That's not good. So we're going to one here with two lethal threats. Oh, wow, they're not attacking that in there. Okay, so let's block. We're going to bolt this Tarmogoyf. And a turn. So both of these are lethal because of the wolf run. So let's start with this because we might have to bounce one. I see your visions first. I can brainstorm into what I look for. So let's do this. All right, put on the bottom.
put on the bottom. So that answers one of them. So I can go minus here, fetch away, push this. But like, is that winning me the game? I don't know if that's actually like winning. All right, we play to win the game. Nice. Oh, they're drawing a path. Well, son of a bitch. Then we have a Serum Visions on top. Well, that just kills us. Well, not necessarily. Play this. Push this. Pass. It doesn't kill us unless they have a land. If they have a land, then it kills us. Because I can go like land, wolf run for one. It is nice that this shuffles our brainstorm. So like if we don't die here, we do we do get a shuffle. Which is nice. But if they have a land, then we're Landerbolt. Wow, okay. Alright. Decent. What do we got in the graveyard? We've got. We have plenty of removal. So let's put this under this. Serum visions. Bottom, bottom. All right, we don't need bobble. Thoughts season good, dismember's not good. Um, thought scour, we can get rid of thought scour. We get a free look, fresh look at the cards. They're drawing a treetop village, which is kind of a problem because it tramples. It's not a problem anymore. Dude, if there's a slow roll and a bolt, then like good for him. I think I'm just gonna snap bolt this blood red elf. I want to. I want to finish this game. So I've got two stubborn denials in my deck. Is it worth brainstorming to them or fate sealing to keep them off of it? I think I'm going to fate seal. Nice. So am I attacking with the angler and the snapcaster? So it's this is seven. Alternatively, it's five. They go to 13, seven, seven. I think we're going to hold back for... Well, it doesn't matter. If they find a way to kill my Gurmag Angler, then they're killing me anyways. If they find a way to remove this blocker, then I'm dead anyways. And they had a path, and they would use it. And this puts, like, the heat on for next turn. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Yeah, we uh we drew we drew well after Jace, but like it's kind of the point, right? They're they're paying costs. Don't do it. Okay, Domri's fine. Domri, you you need a creature. They're just dead now because Jace can bounce whatever they get. Yeah, sweet dude. You got a Curdy. It's probably a land. Yo, this Jace was sweet.
This chase was sweet. This chase was sweet. Look at that. Good start to the stream. <clears throat> I always liked, like, well, I've been playing a lot of blue-white lately, and Jace can be a little frustrating in that deck. Um, uh, I really like keeping hands like this. Not on seven, but... Because, like, anything you do is, like, super explosive there. But if you're in a matchup where your life total matters, you're in a lot of trouble. Um... I'm going to put this on top. It's a unique effect to what our hand is doing. Looks like it's going to be decent. Yeah, the Jace was like, it, it's nice to play an offensive Jace. To not really play a defensive Jace. It was defensive that game for sure. But being able to play a Jace, oh, geez. I kind of want to just take this Tarmogoyf because, so one, two, two cards in my graveyard. Thought Scour gives me cards four, five, and, or three, four, and five. So if I hit a fetch land off of my Thought Scour, a Bobble or a Street Raid, I can cast Dermag Angler. I don't really want to cast Fatal Push. So I think for like tempo plays, I'm just going to take this Tarmogoyf. It's also the only thing they can do next turn. And like, while I do have an answer to the Goyf, a clean answer, I would like to just do my thing. Not really care. Oh, man, they hit a discard spell. It's probably that, like a Bob. All right. So let's Thought Scour ourselves. Yeah, that'll do it. And now we have double push. And while they can Liliana some things back, it's gonna, it's gonna be slow, and I hopefully we can we can outpace that. Okay, so we're just gonna push this. Thought sees the tracker. And crash for five. Okay, so they're not going to field. They can't rip Lily out of the veil now that they did that, so. I could hold this up for the last hope, but I think the last hope is just going to be, like, too clunky this game. But I don't want them to go, I can't cast it either, but I don't want them to go, like, track or fetch land next turn. Bob. And now the game's over. So we just sit behind the stubborn denial. The three of their cards are dead against you in the head. Yeah. Yeah. There's a field. So we know their hands, so we can thought scour freely here. We can rip ourselves a team of battle rage. We're just gonna be able to play another Gurmag Angler too, if they field us. Which this is not the right time to field us. Um guess we'll just get a swamp. That's not bad. I think I'm just going to play this land tapped. Well, I have a Snapcaster, so hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, yeah, so I can just play it tapped. Leave a Fatal Push. I think, I think I'm pretty sure it's Checkmate anyways to the Stubborn Denial. Like, Maelstrom Pulse is the only card I think off the top that gets me. But even that doesn't even get me because of the Stub. 
Uh, scavenging ooze would do nothing. All right. These come out. Snapcaster comes in. We could just cut all of these because this game's likely going to go pretty long. I like my counter magic. I like my removal. I like my counter magic. And I like all my grindy cards. Faith is not that good because you go down a card in a matchup like this. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. Uh, I don't know. Bench, uh, bench summer. I might. Like, there are certainly some very cool cards. Uh, this hand's good. They also just don't want to mulligan. We want to keep anything under the sun here. I'm very excited to play. I think I'm going to do a deck building stream tomorrow. That's kind of convenient. With just the guilds cards. We do want that. So. Uh, I'm playing Traverse, so I might try Lazav, but it doesn't look that good for Grixis. Lazav is. So Liliana of the Veil is the scariest card here. I can stub it, though. I'm going to take Tyler's Tracker. If they play off curve, then I can. Then I'll be able to snap Thought Seize it. So you're trying to Lazav. I, I cannot remember exactly what Lazav does. See, it's pretty solid. Longer the game goes, like double Snapcaster, which is two for one city here. And they're kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't here. Yeah, that's a good that's a good way to punch through. But now we're going to just. Snapcaster thought sees this Liliana. This Liliana is like the the single best card against Grixis Shadow. I'm going to fetch one land tapped. Then this one's likely going to be fetch shock. Oh, I hate it. I hate clicking my lands when I have a ball game play. Right here, we got the first two for one of the, the day. Phyrexian Arena and Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Well, those are problems. Those are such big problems. So I kind of want to take this Phyrexian Arena because I can attack the Liliana and it's a it's a symmetrical effect. I don't have a way to get this off the board, so I'm just going to take this. And then hopefully I draw, like, a creature or something like that to deal with this Liliana uh, the Veil. But this card's going to body me. But at least it's symmetrical. Like, my opponent's going to ditch a card here, too. I'm going to actually ditch this Stubborn Denial now that we have this thing down. I would like to, if I top deck Jace, I would like to be able to play it. It is scavenging. So the last card is Abrupt Decay. All right, well. If they go down, if they go up, what am I ditching? Probably a Fatal Push if they go up. I'd like to, keep, I'd like to sandbag this land. 
Yeah, you'll get it, Micah. One, Lazav becomes a copy of target creature in your graveyard. Remember, it has X, except it's name. So it's just another copy of whatever you want in your graveyard. You can't do it with Gurmag anymore because that costs a million mana. So this means they're decaying this. Oh, wow. What is their other card? Do we just put them in the rope dope here? This has to be a removal spell. We don't have that many red spells in my deck, so I don't think it makes sense. I'm just going to get another watery grave. Okay, another decay. That makes sense. Yeah, it had to be another removal spell. Otherwise, their plays doesn't make a lot of sense. <coughs> yep. So now we're going to go push bolt. And now if we draw Snapcaster Mage, then we clear out this Liliana. We've got two left. Nope, that one's not good. That one is not good. Yeah, Goyf or Shadow can bypass bridge, copy after attacking. Oh, that's cool. If there's no surveil, I won't bother testing them out. I should have got another red source. That was a mistake on my part. Yep. Now we're just going to get bodied by this Liliana. But we're at parity. Which is, you know, nice. And now they're gonna they're gonna take care of two out of three of my lands. Uh, no, I should have fetched there. Which is an awful. All right, well, we're going to be able to deal with that. This thing is going to become an issue. I need to, like, brainstorm into... At least I've got two lands in play. So now if I draw one more card, I can brainstorm into two threats. If I hit Jace. But we're at least at a point where the ultimate's not going to do anything. All right. So now, if he ults his Liliana, then I'm going to kill it, unless he hits a big draw step here. This Lily is like, like yes, this Lily is rough, but it's not that good. Like, like, yes, my opponent is going to get some card advantage out of this thing, but it's at parity. It's not like they're that far ahead of me. So I have a land on top of my deck. How many lands do I have in my deck that produce mana? I've got two more lands in my deck that produce mana. And one of them is on top. I have got Blood Crypt. Yeah, dude. And now, I, like, this is the problem with Liliana right now. It just gets blown over the top by the... Oh, no, we're not going to attack them. It just gets blown over the top. Like, you, like 
all these fair decks just beat the tar out of this thing. Like, this thing is just not what it used to be. It's like, dude, you can fire that goddamn treetop village up. Yeah, I'm going to put both of these on top. And I think I'm just going to like, whatever, my opponent, I don't really want to, I don't really even care about keeping this. Why didn't you block the treetop? Could have killed, why, why didn't I block the treetop? I could have killed the Liliana anyways with the Death Shadow, right? So then... If I don't attack it, then he just nugs my shadow and then shoots this, and then I've got nothing on the board. Yeah, dude, this Jace is just going to body. I don't really want to... I think I'm going to win the long game, so we're just going to like sit here and wait. No, I should have attacked, because if my opponent has a removal spell, they kill my Jace, and then I'm in much worse of a spot. Yeah, and that. Yeah, I should I should be trying to end this game. Cause now my opponent gets like forty two looks at another at another thing to do here. Okay, so bounce this, attack with my Death Shadow, put them down to, yeah, I gotta like finish this game. If this was another black source, then it might have been worth it to brainstorm so I can play two threats. We can't because oh, this makes black because of Urborg. Yeah, no, that I fucked up. Yeah, I muffed. I didn't stack them right either. I should have stacked it so I drew Death Shadow. Yeah. But now we can thought seize it. I don't think blocking was correct there from my opponent. Yeah, I think blocking, I don't think blocking was good. But we have another Death Shadow coming. We can bounce a blocker. That's kind of annoying because that gets some scavenging ooze. But like we still just bounce scavenging ooze. Return Tarmogoyf. That's what I'm saying. This Jace is so sweet because like this Jace is killing our opponent. It's not just like gaining card advantage. Two Tarmogoyfs is a big game. So now I think I just bounce a Goyf and attack with a Shadow. Bounce Goyf, attack with Shadow. They have to... They chump the Shadow. No, they, they might not chump the Shadow. Bounce. Then they have to block both Shadows next turn and the Gurmag Angler gets in. Oh, I appreciate the bits, Cody. Alternatively, we could brainstorm. What do we have to hit? We have, we've used a push. We've used another push. We've used all three of our pushes. So there's no point brainstorming because we can't Snapcaster Mage. So we're just going to bounce this. Attack them. And then play another one.
We're definitely like not a lock to win this game. And it's definitely because I messed up with my brainstorm that turn, where I could have brainstormed and then played two, and I could have been attacking with two Death Shadows this turn. It's funny how this herb org also like helps me. Like I would be surprised if we won here. But yeah, things are gonna get a little tough. Especially considering they can go up and then get this thing back. And then like they can go like double block, single block. Jeez. So what does that do? So if I attack with everything, they go double block a Death Shadow, block Death Shadow, block with Treetop Village, and then I pay two life and wipe their board. Because like both, presumably, Goif Goif goes here, pay two life makes this nine, which then this eats this, this gets through. The problem is it's like not a good way to go about this. Yeah, I don't think I can attack with the Gurmag Angler. I don't think we can actually clear the board, though, which is the problem. Because I can just throw two Tarmogoyfs in front of here. Chump, double block here. I dismember one of them, but it doesn't matter. My shadow becomes a 9-10. This becomes two power. So my shadow would live. Gurmag Angler gets blocked by Treetop Village. I think we just attack with these. And then if they get any funny business, we might be able to get rid of everything. But they also might just animate the Treetop Village and block. Though they are kind of incentivized to block because they can rebuy a creature with this Liliana. Alternatively, they can just go like chump, chump, and then kill us. So maybe I have to kill this thing before it blocks. Because they can go chump, chump. You have to kill this before it blocks. To make it so they block here, block here. One lives, though. I just die. I'm just dead anyways. I'm basically dead if I attack. So I shouldn't have attacked. Because... Right, I just, I just shouldn't have attacked. Because they just go block, block, lose two creatures, kill me on the crackback. I can dismember this. They go double block, block. One Tarmogoyf, two Tarmogoyfs die. They get back another Tarmogoyf, and then we're in the same position. So yeah, let's just get rid of this. Yeah, I have to kill Treetop. And then he just goes double block, block. I kill one of them. He rebuys it, and then it's Death Shadow, Gurmag Angler against Tarmogoyf. Um, against Tarmogoyf. It's Death Shadow, Gurmag Angler against Double Goyf. Then they have the card in their hand in the draw step. I'm going to assume the card in their hand is a dud, though. Primarily because it makes sense for it to be a dud, and we can't win if it's not a dud. The problem is that like, we're not really drawing to anything because we just don't have a lot going on. Like, we only have two lands left. This is not Guilds of Ravnica Sealed. That is not open on Moto yet. 
or available. I wonder if it was right or not for me Sorry, I have a tweet to send out. Okay. Let him block. We could have won. If he double blocks both shadows. What if he just like... What if he just goes like... Chump, chump. No, if he just goes chump chump, we can't win because then he just attacks with two Tarmoglyphs, Jonas. I think we're going to keep it. Because he attacks with both. I dismember one. I don't know. Sand's pretty solid. Dismember one. Yeah, I don't think there was a way. I think I, I couldn't let him chump with the treetop village. This Bob is a problem. How many draw steps do I have to answer Dark Confidant? I think I'm just going to take the Bob. If they thought sees my Liliana, I can cast Gurmag Angler. If they thought sees my Gurmag Angler, I have a Liliana. Let's just not get carded out of this game. Because Bob is the easiest way to lose to these black green decks. And now if they take another card that's not Liliana, then I'm going to have Liliana plus Stub. No, I wanted to know what their top card was there, and and Leal too. Okay, so we have this. That's <laughs> that's not bad. The old Thoughtseize bug. Uh, we want to get rid of all of these cards because that's our only option. So that's what they drew. They drew a treetop. This Blooming Marsh. So they're going to play Kitchen Finks. We know they're five cards. I don't think it's worth holding up Stubborn Denial when I could just find another land, which I didn't. I don't think I want either of these. I think I just want another land. Our hand is loaded. The old trophy. It'll be, like, it'll be interesting, like, 
certainly my matchup against Black Green decks gets much worse because they actually have good... Oh, man, they hit the Liliana. That is just absolutely vomit-inducing. All right. Um, I think we're just going to go up with this one. No, I'm just going to go get my Gurmag Angler. Because if they want to use their entire next turn to deal with this Liliana and not progress their board, then that's all right. I guess we didn't know about this treetop village. We did know that they had this treetop village. <clears throat> nice blue mana. Yeah, that would have been nice to have. They take a Snapcaster. They took up. We're going to ditch our Stubborn Denial. And this, this Snapcaster also insulates us from the Edict because we can just flash this in. Because I Serum Visioned Cody. All right, this means my Liliana is living. But they're going to be able to edict. Edict and kill this. Uh, then they have Kitchen Finks versus our draw step. Let's just keep our graveyard intact. So we've got the Liliana off the board. Let's just hope they don't have a follow-up. There's no way they're just jamming kitchen things. Okay, all right. That makes sense. All right, that's something. So we're behind now. Now we need something like a Snapcaster Mage. Oh, wow. That gets back Bob. We get to answer Bob, but then they still have Kitchen Finks. Oh, they're just not going to do anything with it. Okay. All right, let's take care of this Finks. They might rebuy the Finks. But, like, no, we can't do everything. There's a Tracker. Gonna get back Tyler's tracker. Let's hope they don't have a land. Though we can't really beat a land or not. Let me get the clue. Yeah, now we're in a lot of trouble because they can rebuy this. So maybe I was supposed to hold up the counter spell. Um, turn off, turn off all yields, turn off all yields. I'm gonna kill this. We're low enough on life total where I don't want to like not kill this, have them crack two clues, and then kill me. Yeah, we're probably out of this one. There's a lot of really interesting points of this game. Yes, so keeping up, like, in hindsight, keeping up Stubborn Denial would have been game over. Was it right to keep up Stubborn Denial or hit our third land to be able to cast our two Snapcasters or our last hope? Or our last hope? That's the big question. Not hindsight. Chatting it all the time. This is a result. This is a results-based stream. I think getting that kitchen thing is actually a pretty solid play from them. All right, here's the old prey. And now we're pretty much cooked because we don't even have battle. Like if we had battle rage, we might be able to win this game, but we don't have battle rage. Let's get this thing off the board. Get two for one.
No way to lost. They would have top deck Lily or Pulse in that situation. So they're going up to their third mana. So that's not the only way that I lose, Neil and Leo. Like, our hand is bottlenecked up. If our opponent hit, runs off a couple spells and gets underneath us, we easily could lose that game. I think. Like, I've seen, I've seen games where that happens. <laughs> You're killing me, Rafi. You're killing me. Let me look at this. Let's go back to this game here. Okay, so we look here. So we know they have a Blooming Marsh. So this is what we know they have. So they go Blooming Marsh, Thoughtseize, my Gurmag Angler. We rip another Gurmag Angler, which was nice. So this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. We delve our angler. They play treetop village here, right? <laughs> Let's see you messed that up. Didn't Greenback win both three? I don't know what you mean, Watermelon. I think they played that treetop. Yeah, they did. Okay. So here's 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 known information. And this is the play here. And the reason why I see our envisioned was because these two cards are very important. This game is likely not ending anytime soon because of this Kitchen Finks. Like, they have Kitchen Finks plus one unknown plus one draw step. So it's not likely that I'm ending this game at all very quickly. So this is why I see our envisioned here because I wanted to be able to press my advantage more knowing that the card Liliana the Veil vale really punishes me. But, like, the only card, yeah, this is why I think I did this. Yeah, there's a lot going on, for sure. I'm going to tweet this old picture out here. Ask the people. And then I'll get back to another game. Yeah, I just thought, like, my whole rationale was, like, I don't, I don't think this game is ending anytime soon. And the only way that this game, this game ends soon... There's not even any way because we can't get through this kitchen. Like we can't enter. We can't mess with this kitchen phase. Our hand is. Top left corner. They have one unknown. I think you could have waited a turn or two. You weren't forced yet. You have to see him there. Stuff is also known, right? So they they knew that I had stubborn denial. At least I believe. No, they didn't know that I had stubborn denial. Now I want to go back and see if they knew if I had stubborn denial. 
Let me just see if they stop. We'll get back to the games here in a second. That's what I would like. I, like I'm just like praying to draw a card. This is a tight match here. Like I think there was a lot to play during this. So yeah, when they when I thought seized when they thought seized me, I did not have the stub in the night. Yes, I did. So they knew I had stub. So like I guess like the game becomes like it's all about how you want to play. And I don't know if I want to play draw go against a deck with higher quality cards than I do, which is the game that I'm signing up for. I, I literally, I do not think, I think everybody is blowing Assassin's Trophy out of the, out of the water. Because, so here's like my Assassin's Trophy ramp. It is a very good card. Like, it will be put into every black-green deck and it will see play. The problem with black-green decks is that they play cards like Liliana the Veil that's not very good right now. They play cards like Scavenging Ooze. They play these very slow, clunky cards that don't kill your opponent quickly. Like, they're still playing slow cards that do not end games. So, like, while Assassin's Trophy is an improvement, it comes, like, it does not fix an inherent problem with rock decks. Like, your stat, you're, you're putting rampant growth onto your removal spells, which isn't great against the control decks, is horrible against the combo decks. A two, another two-mana removal spell isn't even good against humans because of Thalia. Like, the fact that it can is very flexible is good. It's going to see play, but it is not the end-all, be-all in any way. Like, it will get you a couple percentage points against Tron. You're probably going down percentage points against humans. You're certainly going down percentage points against Storm... Um, you're probably, I would say that you're probably gaining points against control because even though you give them a land, the Teferis are what matter. Um, you're gaining points against Death Shadow, but like those, those decks, like the uninteractive, like the Bant Spirits of the world, the, um, humans, the storms, the ironworks, they're going to use that mana and they're going to kill you. Like you're just enabling combo decks. Look at that, the man, the myth himself, chiming in. We're going to mulligan the sand. <clears throat> I would see her in that spot. Yeah, I got see her, in, I, I see her visioned, and out of there, there are two unknowns, they hit Liliana, and that got me. We'll keep this one. We will keep that one. I'm going to hold on to my Street Wraith. I am going to bobble now. Welding Jar. So we're playing against Hardened Scales. With double Hardened Scales. And Ancient Stirring and Throne of Gifts. So I think we're just going to take this Ancient Stirrings. And we're going to look to get this Death Shadow going and win this game quickly. Well, the, the the thing, the hardest thing that the black green decks had to deal with was Gurmag Angler, and they do have a very, they have a reliable way to deal with Gurmag Angler now. All right, so let's cycle this. Um, we're gonna have to cast the Angler. I think it's just guaranteed more more points. Though, I mean, we're going to feel kind of bad. I guess it's five either way. If we hit a if we hit a fetch land and my opponent plays a creature, then we're going to feel bad we didn't play the Death Shadow. But the Shadow can also get smoked by Hanger Backwalker, which isn't great. Right, Darksteel Citadel. Throne of Geth, Welding Jar. Okay, so now we're going to play Death Shadow. We're going to leave up this red mana so that if they do try to um, smoke this shadow with Hangerback Walker, then we can uh, we can bolt ourselves. I'm going to mute my. I'm going to eat a granola bar and just mute myself for a second. I'll be right back.
Okay. So, I can attack with this shadow. The biggest they can make this thing is 2, 4, 6, 8. They'll make it 11 here. They can regenerate it. Well, no, so this is more. So this is 4, 8. This is 3, 6. 9, 12, 15, no, my math is wrong. So I think I actually have to shock myself and pass. Chump with this and use Dismember and Battle Rage to win next turn. I shouldn't have shocked. I should have just played this land. Shouldn't have just given away that information. Because... 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. This is 11. Though if they do that, then this thing dies. So this is a free attack. So I can make it a 10. They make it a 15. And then we just trade. Because the if they or they just sack or they don't sack the welding jar and it becomes 12. And then they sack the welding jar. And my shadow lives. So. The million dollar question is. Is it worth trading. My shadow for his board. And I think the answer is yes. Even though we have battle rage on top. And we can still chump block next turn. And if I trade this. It makes it so like. Hanger back isn't isn't game over. Well, this is three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Dismember makes it a ten, which makes this a ten, and they trade. So is my math off, Rafi? If they go three, six, nine, dismember, they trade. We trade their entire board except Ravager for this. They just go nine. Yeah, sure. Sure, Rafi. They go to nine, but then my I trade my my dismember for all of these cards here. Which I think I'm going to do. Cause then they can't cast Hangerback Walker unless they have a land in their hand. Yeah, so I'm okay with them trading or not trading because I have Battle Rage on top. And if they, I guess you, you're saying they could go like this. I see what you're saying. So they either trade all these for my shadow, can't cast anything, and then we get to beat in with Hangerback Walker, or they trade Darksteel Citadel, Throne of Geth, Welding Jar, Darksteel Citadel. Okay, so then they're just going to go like this. That's okay. All right, take it easy, Enlil. So now we have to dodge a walkie, walkie boy. For the next turn, we got him by a country mile. Yeah, so now we're good. Unless they go land mocks, walkie boy, which would not be great. Oh, God. No, they play the land, right? Yeah.
3, 6, 9, makes this 15, 20 minus 5. Oh, so they're still not dead. They do have to block it, and there's no way or other way around it. If they play another creature, this could get interesting. But they don't play another creature, then 3, 6, 9, 15, 20 minus 5. They go to 2. And my shadow dies. We're blocking. I guess the way this goes bad is that, like, if I attack with my shadow and they, like, play, like, a whatever it is here, a little moron. Because they, they got to have something. What? Alright, put a plus one, plus one. Whenever a creature in the battlefield, you're put a plus one. Okay. Got him. Dude, sometimes you just have to bring the rage. <laughs> that is not, that's not how we should do it, Cody Jones. Okay, so how do you board against this deck, Ben? You just bring in all of your removal? And then the ceremonious rejection. I'm assuming you cut stubborn denials. Like Gurmag Angler seems kind of like small ball. Probably a f maybe a thought sees or two because they empty their hand so quickly. We grace the same fact. That's the plan. Lily's good. I always like have mixed with this card. So you bring in, do you bring in the angers? Like are these, are these eight cards what we're looking for here? When you cut more thought seizes or like street rates? Is this, is this what we're doing here? All right, we'll try that. In matchups where you, like, do you keep this looting in after sideboard when your, like, deck gets honed? Or do you cut this looting for, like, a Snapcaster Mage as soon as you get, like, six one-mana removal spells in your deck? Because I always found Faithless Looting to be... Much worse after sideboard, once your deck is honed. Like, it's a decent game one card. Yeah, I boarded Jason in two matchups there, Rafi. Boarded in against Black Green Rock, and I boarded in against, like, Anaya Big Zoo deck. All right. We're doing it. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to mulligan. I don't really want to keep a hand without a threat. This hand's pretty serviceable, but like this card's kind of dead. This card's kind of like a mulligan unless we get lucky. All right. If we're going to board it in, we're going to keep it on top. The old hardy boy. 
There's not really anything else I want to do on turn one, and I've only got two discard spells left in my deck. So I think I'm going to save this for Serum Visions. It's not a Hangerback Walker. I'm going to puke. Yep. Well, at least we have the Liliana to deal with it. God, I've embodied so many times by this card. Um, so I'm going to fetch because we're going to do that anyways. We're not in the market for another land. The big brain thing here is do I want Steam Vents so that I can cast Agar? And it probably is. Probably is what we're looking for. Oh, shoot. I just completely zoned out and forgot with this Steam Vents, I can't cast this last hope. That wasn't good. You should just play Legacy. Yeah, no, Blood Crypt would have been better. Yeah, no, for sure. I just, like, went right over the top. I was stuck on Anger of the Gods. I was like, oh, we kept this sucker on top. We want it. It's not one of my finer moves. I actually have a play surgical surgical for anger. Right? That doesn't. Yeah, I think I think that's a bit narrow. This card's annoying. What is this? The Ravager. It's a hanger back walker. Okay. Gonna make my boy big. Nope, they're not. So, I think we're going to snap Anger of the Gods here in two turns. So, like, I think I shocked myself. I think the game plan is to... Oh, shoot. This thing gets huge. Oh, man, we're all over the place. Because of the two counters, I had to go snap Bolt there, probably. Or I could have offered up the attack. And if they pop it, and that's probably better for us. But now this Hangerback Walker is going to get massive. Uh, we might be able to set up a situation later where we can um, get over top of it. I have not played this game very well, though. I got lucky by hitting a land there, but this game has not been not been great. Yeah, I've not I've not played this this game very well. But that's why we get three. So when we punt this one away, we have the chance to punt another one away. Dark Steel Citadel. Arcbound Ravager. Well, that one's not bad. Maybe they'll just like be stupid and move all these over here. Oh, they're just going to kill me. Move this over here. Merc me. All right, we're good. We're good. I won't sit through this anymore. <laughs> so, Ben, do you bring in the, the discard on the play? Because you can hit hardened scales, or is that still off of there? These go over here. Thought you'd gone to the dark side. It's a fun deck to play. It is a fun deck to play.
I'd split 2 2 with Raids on the play. All right, we're going to do it. This is Ben Jones' deck. The man, the myth, the legend. He's Mr. Whatever. Oh, you're, kill you're killing me, Moto. Oh, Moto can't even handle this. We got Mr. Mr. Ben Jones himself right here. What an animal. What an animal. Spell Skype for the Raptor. You think Storm matchup is it's very good. Uh, I think I'm gonna mulligan. Like, I don't have a way to get my Gurma Gangler on play. These two battle rages aren't very good. Uh, like that's like a million miles away. This hand is not much better, but on a six, we're going to keep it. I put a mulligan, too. Like, way to keep it easier. You don't think the Storm matchup's good, Ben? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put this on the bottom because, like, well, we could hit Hanger back Walker. We're not going to, like, we're not going to be able to hit Hardened Scales, but we can hit Walker. Though that makes my Gurmag Angler super slow. I think I'm gonna put it on the bottom. Put this on the bottom. We're looking for like ways to turbo out the angler or a death shadow. Tony the tiger in the chat. Yeah. It's more than good. God. You bastard. You hardened scales bastard, you. Nice. What do you got? The hanger back walker? Motherfucker. All right, we're going to push this. We're going to take our lumps, and then we're going to fetch a tap land. I think, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to turn this a Death Shadow on if we hit a, with this Dismember anyways. So I don't think it's, we just protect our life total. Oh, man. I think this is going to be my last league of the night. I was working in the steam tunnels under DC today, and I am, like, exhausted. I just feel myself, like, draining out. I shouldn't turn off my auto yields. All right, hanger back, Walker. All right, if we had a fetch land here, we're in good shape. I'm so good at this game. Always want another black source. Um, I'm an industrial hygienist, and I was uh, I was checking the steam tunnels underneath Washington D.C. for uh, whatever it is um, for asbestos today. I think we're just gonna dismember this thing. Well, we can't mod. Well, it, oh shoot! I thought I turned off my auto yields. Like, why couldn't I respond to that? Well, that's annoying. Well, now I should just do it. Well, I don't really want to take like that much damage. But these things aren't in the air, which is all right. All right, we're just gonna do this. Would have been nice to get rid of those counters. If we done in response to the trigger, this wouldn't have happened. Oh, and it gets four. Ugh.
You're an electrician. I was almost I almost decided to be an electrician. Yep, I did. I took electrical work in uh, in high school. Now we're dead. I wonder how this game would have been different if we could have gotten rid of that servo with the trigger on the stack. So I get plus on this. Becomes four power, buys me another turn to draw. Um, draw Death Shadow. So if we can draw Death Shadow, Death Shadow Battle Rage is going to do... It's going to do some work. Oh, no, I'm super dead. I, oh. I am tired, and I'm starting to lose it because of that. I think, I think I'm going to call it for the night. I'm pretty tired. I'm a little all over the place.